G'day and welcome to this video about the effect of mufflers and resonators on exhaust tone. The first thing to note is that mufflers and resonators don't create exhaust noise, they just take exhaust noise away. So firstly you're starting with your engine with its number of cylinders and its particular firing order and then your header which does have an effect on exhaust noise and then at the header back so essentially what you have from your open header is your noise source and everything from there back is just taking noise away from that source with the exception of cross pipes and H pipes uh, which, are, are, which do have an effect on exhaust noise in the case of V type engines. Now a typical exhaust system from the header back will then have a catalytic converter which does have some noise attenuation effect and then it will go into a resonator and then one or more mufflers at the rear of the vehicle and finally exiting via the familiar tailpipe. So on the left we have straight through absorptive or glass pack mufflers. These are very popular, uh, typified by brands like Borla and Magnaflow. Essentially what you have is a tube that's perforated and then around the outside is sound absorbing uh, material, flame resistant, being fiberglass, and so by passing the noise, uh, so by passing the flow and the noise through this tube, you absorb some of the noise out into the material around the outside where it's turned into heat. Uh, this is a larger muffler again with the same design. And on my left and on your right we have factory style baffled tri-chamber triple flow mufflers. Now these are called turbo mufflers since they were originally developed for the Chevrolet Corvair Turbo. These are very effective uh, at suppressing low frequencies while these types of mufflers are very effective at suppressing high frequencies. There's essentially a lot of hype out there on the internet pushing people towards these straight through style high flow mufflers. Now while they are great for minimizing pressure loss since essentially there's the pressure loss is no greater compared to a straight tube of the same length. They however, they however aren't that effective at noise reduction. Now they're not too bad on turbocharged vehicles where the turbo is an additional source of uh, noise attenuation or is essentially an additional muffler. However in naturally aspirated vehicles they can be a bit too loud. Now baffle type mufflers have their own distinctive sound characteristic which I'll mention in a moment and they tend to be used by OEM original equipment manufacturers and they're quite popular for aftermarket European exhaust systems while aftermarket, uh, aftermarket Japanese and American exhaust systems tend to use the fiberglass pack styles for the most part. Now there's a lot of confusion about how these mufflers sound so I've, the best way to think of them is that if you imagine your hi-fi system and if you have a bass and treble control on there, so you can wind, you can roll off the bass or you can roll off the treble, then the glass pack style muffler essentially cancels out high frequencies first. So that's the rasp of an engine and it leaves behind the bass. So that's going to leave behind that kind of deep boomy sound, which some people like and some people don't. So you can think of a glass pack style muffler such as a Magnaflow or a Borla as cancelling out the high frequencies so essentially being like rolling off the treble control of your hi-fi system. So these types of mufflers produce a very smooth exhaust sound. Lots of bass, not much rasp and treble, being a very deep sort of modern sort of high-tech sound if you like. On the other hand, OEMs tend to use these baffled style mufflers. Now I'll show you the internal construction of these mufflers here. So as you can see, the, the exhaust gas enters at one end, travels down to the other end, gets travels back up to the first end, and then finally out of the muffler. Now this seems very restrictive, and like it would cause a great pressure drop. Uh, so as it turns out, this style of muffler usually has about a 30% 30, 30 lower level of flow for a given pressure head on the flow bench. Now while that doesn't sound great, the thing to bear in mind is that you're getting a quieter car. Um, especially for 
low frequencies. What these mufflers are great at is cancelling out low frequency, boomy, bassy noise. They, they more or less pass through the high end raspy sound of an engine, the, the high frequency raspy sound, but they, they really are great at cancelling out the lower frequencies. You can think of these types of mufflers as being like rolling off the bass knob, uh, the bass uh, control knob of your hi-fi system, as shown here. So which muffler has the best type of exhaust sound? Well, you can think of it as a bit like music. To have nice sounding music, you really need a good blend of treble and bass and mids. So in my opinion, the best exhaust sound you're going to find is from, by using a combination of the different types of mufflers. However, there's a lot of hype out there promoting the straight through fiberglass pack mufflers, and they can be great in some applications and if that's the sound you're looking for. However, you'll note that a lot of the really great sounding factory cars, like the Porsche GT3, the Jaguar F-Type, they use a variation on the baffled style muffler. Now, I'll, now let's have a look at the internal construction of these mufflers. So firstly, here let's, we'll have a look at a cutaway of a straight through fiberglass packed muffler. You can see that there's not going to be any flow restriction compared to a straight pipe. And now let's have a look at the internal constructions of some of these baffled style OEM mufflers. Firstly, this is the muffler of the current generation S550 Mustang GT. Now I don't have a cutaway of this particular design. However, let's have a look at the previous model mu Mustang. Now you can see here that this is a variation on the tri flow design. You can see the exhaust gas going in and coming back and then going back out. But on the end there is a resonator chamber uh, which is tuned based on the uh, diameter and length of the inlet tube and then on the volume of the resonator cavity itself or the exhaust gas doesn't actually flow through the ch chamber. And this cancels out a specific band of frequencies. Uh, and then here, this is the muff muffler from a Subaru Forester Turbo about 2003. Let's have a look at the internal construction. Now this internal construction is of a Subaru SDI muffler, but we'll expect the Forester muffler to be similar. You can see it's slightly different. The exhaust gas comes into the first chamber where there are three perforated tubes which the exhaust has, has, gas has to flow from the outside to the inside tube and then into the second chamber and finally out through the third chamber and out the exit. Let's have a look at another tri muffler. This one is for a Holden Commodore. Um, you can see here that it's a very typical tri turbo muffler design. Um, and now let's have a look at the Dynamax Super Turbo, a popular aftermarket muffler. Now generally speaking, the noise attenuation of a muffler is going to increase as the size of the muffler increases. So the bigger the muffler is, the more the noise attenuation is going to be. Um, the, the reason why you want a blend of different muffler styles, possibly, is that if you have just a baffled style muffler, this is like rolling down the base, but, but you've still got all of this treble and you'll have this incredibly raspy sounding engine which isn't necessarily going to sound that good. And so by adding a perforated glass pack muffler upstream, you can just tone down the rasp so it's in proportion to the base and so you have a great sounding exhaust. Similarly, if you have just straight through perforated mufflers, you're going to have a very deep, very smooth sounding exhaust sound, which might be what you want, but then it might be, uh, it might lack some of the sparkle and pizzazz of some of those higher frequencies of the engine. So I hope this video has been interesting and informative about the effect of resonators and mufflers on exhaust noise. Thanks for watching. Bye.